Spencer Haywood coming in. Wow. Yeah, dude, he's coming in the studio. I'm about to, I'm, uh, That's pretty I mean, awesome. That was man. before I was even a. My mom was even born, but you know what? <laughs> Shout out to Spencer Haywood, man. Hey. <laughs> well, look, man. Look, 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 guys. We are recording now. I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to be here. I've had some good, good personal news, some good business news, all the way around, man. Everything is good. I'm hoping you guys are having a positive. I guess what midweek Wednesday. I'm hoping that the week so far up to this point has been good for you. And it, hey, you guys already know, it's your boy Detroit Kool-Aid. It's the Woodward Pistons podcast, and I'm rocking out with Mr. Everything over here, Jeff Iafredi. Hey, listen, guys, before we get to the legend, we got to say, <laughs> I like the work that the young boy has been putting in. I do. I do. I love the work that Mr. Jeff Iafredi has been putting in. When we first brought him in, we didn't. I didn't know the full dynamic, how much we'd be able to utilize him, because you guys see him all across the Woodward Sports platforms, including um, From Half Court. Yep. Uh, with Sean, as well as uh, Jeff and Gentry podcast, uh, Morning Woodward Show alum, and you still kind of on there and throughout all the other shows. And he just works hard behind the scenes, socials, um, you know, clipping, a lot of different things. And so as this show has progressed, as our audience is kind of in the fam, you guys are the fam, it's kind of grown. Uh, I realized this is the family, you know, Rod, myself, Jeff, and I wanted to be able to recognize Jeff here today as an official co-host. So, look, I don't know how much it matters to any of you guys. To me, I'm about loyalty. I'm about team. I'm about the brotherhood. I'm about family. I'm about that. That's what I love about you. So, hey, let's get it, man. We're going to get into it. So, now we got to handle the business. Your first time doing the drum roll as co-host. It's official call. Show me up. Show me up. Hey, yo, we got the legend, Detroit News, Rod Beard. How you doing, bro? I am doing wonderfully. For for a Wednesday. If it was Tuesday, I'd feel a little bit worse, but it's Wednesday. I know I can muscle through the rest yeah. of the week. Yeah. Let's, you know what, man? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. The weekends were it was okay. Oh yeah, weekend was good, man. I, I uh it's my first I was outside playing this weekend, playing some ball, having just chilling. Uh didn't do much, but no, it was a cool weekend. I yeah. enjoyed it. Right? Anything adventurous? Yeah, I I worked for the kids, man. And my son had a baseball tournament, so I was out at that thing helping the coach and won yeah. a couple of games but fell short in the semifinals. So that's how that works. Bro, young Rod, he can he can play, man. I see the clips. I see the clips he's posting. I'm like, yo, he can go. Young Rod. We gotta get out there and support. Oh, absolutely. I don't I don't want to like put his name out there unless Rod wants to, but he can go. Oh no, he's 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 got social media. It's Jonathan. There we go. There we go. Hey, no, hey, boost him, man. What's these platforms for if we don't, man? Especially if they're performing. He's doing his thing. So, but um, the heat wave. Hopefully, everybody's drinking their water. I actually forgot my gallon jug today. I feel like a yeah, like a that, failure, you man. Have that every single week. I feel man. like a failure. But you know, what? I'm gonna get back to it. Stay hydrated. Always hoop. Always stay clued into the Pistons. I wanted to start with. With a question, man, and this one comes from the homie, um, JD Sports Tweets. Shout out to him as well. You guys might have seen him on our table talk, the over-under contest for the Pistons. You might want to do that for the summer edition. There are some prizes you can win, including a Woodward Sports t-shirt. Right. But he asked the question, who's the best recent Piston to wear the number seven? Ben Gordon, Killian Hayes, Stanley Johnson, or Brandon Knight? And there's a reason why I'm asking this, because where we're going next. And I just wanted to throw in there, have they ever – have any of them been better than Chucky Atkins? <laughs> <laughs> I was I say Chucky, throw him in there. <laughs> that list, man, Ben Gordon. The first comment. Stanley Johnson. What's the first comment? The first comment is ugly list. <laughs> oh, that's a. It's, it's, it's not a pretty list. It's not a pretty list. We have not done the number seven justice, man, wow. in recent years. I have like a personal vendetta against Stanley Johnson because like I, I'm a big Devin Booker fan. That's like my favorite player oh, in the NBA. Gracious, man. So like, and it's not even Stanley's fault, but like uh, it's just, there's already like a little bit of bias there. So, um, man, that's a tough list. I'd probably go Killian just because it, I feel like there's a lot there that is untapped. I feel like that he can still grow into. Like I feel like the other guys, you kind of you kind of knew, like especially with Stanley Johnson. Like after the first like one, like his rookie season, his second season, you knew like this is Stanley Johnson. Like he's not like Killian. There's a lot more there. I think you can unlock. So I'm gonna go Killian, even though the list is a, it's a tough one. It's a, a tough, tough one. List, man, because was Brandon Brandon uh, Knight. I, I felt like nice he too. had some stretches, yeah. but. I don't know, man. Oh my gosh, this is a tough. B Knight was tough a, everyone list. remembers him getting his ankles broke by Kyrie Irving in, in the uh, on what's, the what's the original question? 
the best recent piston to wear number seven? And the recent. options they had okay. here were Ben Gordon, Killian Hayes, Stanley Johnson, Brandon Knight. Obviously, if he put Swag Jennings in there, that one would probably take off. That one would See, be that's, Brandon that's Jennings. who I'm going with because that's more recent than Brandon Knight and yeah. Ben Gordon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, I see that he's he probably stacked the deck here with this answer because that is an ugly list, man. Yeah, he wanted it that ugly. Is, yeah, because like, Jennings and he, was he the, didn't put Thon in there either. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't he didn't put the one year of Thon the Thon experiment. Honorable mention, Thon Maker, man. But no, I mean for real. Would you put Thon Maker above Stanley Johnson? <laughs> I mean No. No. <laughs> no. Hey, Stanley, hey, he, he guarded LeBron for that playoff series, too. You know he, what? We got that, bro. He did. He said he got in LeBron's head. I still think <laughs> still he might be there, him. man. Like, that's who that's who LeBron was thinking about in the Drew League was Stanley Johnson. <laughs> so can I, can, I tell, can I tell you that story, that Stanley Johnson story in hey, Cleveland? Hey, let us know. Please. So we're in the locker room, and, and everybody's talking to everybody else, like to, to – um, to Blake, or not, not to Blake, because Blake wasn't here. It was like to Drummond and, and Reggie and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, ho-hum, ho-hum. And then Stanley's just kind of sitting over in the corner. And I, I was kind of cool with Stanley. So it's just, you're waiting for something to happen. And I think it was Mark Spears that came over and just started talking to him and asking him some questions. And it was just, it was a fountain of just quotes. It just kept flowing of everything he said was like, oh, oh. Oh. Man. oh, oh, you knew you struck okay. gold. <laughs> no, it was just, it was, I didn't even go back and finish writing the game story. I knew to go back and write those quotes because yeah. it was that good. It was, I don't even care about the, the game stories in, it's on the web. It'll do what it does. These quotes are about to be money. Just, yeah. oh, what do you say? What's the, he, he was just, I'm in his head, and I'm not worried about LeBron. It, that was the <laughs> best. I'm, I'm not worried about LeBron. He's talking, thinking about me. I'm in his head. Bro, you're not Wait. talking about um, just some random cat. This is Bron. Do you understand what this is about to be? But but the thing about Stanley is he was – Stanley might have been the – you have to be, have a certain level of overconfidence to be in the NBA, just to, to be an NBA player. Was Stanley was on 10 with that. He was on 10. Yeah. He was just – I, I can, can I make this from half court? Yes, I can make this from half court because I'm an NBA player. And it's like, well, maybe you can't. And so <laughs> my, my set favorite those expectations better, man. But is there a way that we could like bottle up half of um, Stanley Johnson's confidence and give it to Killian? Just half? It, it's like if you took a little medicine dropper of of that confidence and put it on <laughs> Killian, it would just be it's like, like MJ Seeker stuff. Hey, if, no, like in, in Gremlins, when 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 they put the water on him and then like two more popped out. <laughs> that's like that's like with John ja Morant saying he'd cook MJ. Like you just need that confidence, yeah. man. Like e even if you disagree yeah. with him or not, man. Like you appreciate the confidence. Like that's what I loved about Stanley. He you never could question his mentality or his no, approach. You couldn't. It was just the skill. No, it. Let me give you my favorite Stanley story. So this is when Tim Hardaway was a um, an assistant coach. So it was after practice one day, and um, Tim is like, Tim was mad at Stanley for something that he didn't do, and they were just talking trash. And Stanley was like, well, I would rip you. And everybody kind of looked like, how you going to rip Tim Hardaway? What you, what is that? So <laughs> Tim said, well, I'll, I'll go by you, and um, I'll be at the basket. And Stanley's like, no, I would have ripped oh, you man. and been going that way. So if you are, I think that was his rookie year too. If you're a wow. rookie and you're going to tell Tim Hardaway that you would rip him and be going the other way with the ball, Different. that's that's the confidence that Stanley had is that he didn't care. Some of it is is kind of uh, delusional yeah, in, in my sense. mind, but I know you have to have that level of of confidence in yourself to say that you would rip Tim Hardaway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, man's got the most nastiest crossover of all time. I'll rip you. Oh boy, that two. <laughs> gracious, boy. It, it, it was a two piece in a biscuit. Two piece in a biscuit. Those, yeah, those two are two of my favorite. Biscuit. That's it. Those are two of my favorite Stanley stories. Oh, Stanley was just, he had the most confidence that I think I've ever seen in an NBA player. Yeah, it's it, shout out to Stanley. I mean, obviously, with some of the players that were around that, that some Piston fans wanted, 
I think we all wanted Stanley Johnson to work out because of that mentality that he had. Absolutely. You know, I, yeah. it, he worked hard. I, I do give him that. And I do wonder if some of it was back to the phrase that you have coined and made very, very popular. What was he asked to do? Right. You know, based on the talent that was there, we look at the fact that Killian Hayes, which is where we're going to go next, I think he has an opportunity to really change the trajectory of these number seven jerseys. I really do. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought we were a little harsh last time of our, or, or, or overreacted on our summer league. And I, I don't think people understand. We weren't saying that Killian wasn't going to be anything. We're just stating, hey, when you show up here, we want to see you be the man. That doesn't mean you have to score 50 points, but right. you can't look like you're – you know, trying to make an NBA roster. You got to have tough conversations. Like right. that—that's what this podcast is for, too. Like you got to have those conversations. Definitely, man. I, I like that you said that. And you know, I, I with, with Killian Hayes, I want to talk about this next year. So let's not talk about what we think he was. And I want you and the commenters both. Hey, look, answer the question: Who do you think is the best to to wear seven? Uh, most recently in Pistons history. Um, but you know, what do you think Killian Hayes is going to be this year? What are you expecting? If we were too harsh or, or whatnot over what we thought he showed so far versus, hey, everybody went crazy over his workout tapes, didn't it? It went, it went viral. We know. We run the accounts. But then when we look at the summer league stint, people didn't like necessarily that. Right. But where, where do we believe he is trending towards heading? <clears throat> what do you think he's going to do this year? You go first, Rod. I think the number one thing is he has to be healthy. And – it's been such – some of them are, are bigger injuries and some are smaller, but they've always kind of short-circuited his seasons and his summer league mm-hmm. when um, he was supposed to play with Cade. He got like a concussion and he landed on something else. And he, he, he it's a thumb. It's a, a, a ankle. It's a knee. It's, a, it's always something. And it's not his fault, but you want to see him kind of play through injuries. And not that, not that he – it's such a tough um, kind of high wire to to cross with him because you want to say, "Hey, play through injuries and, and man up and just be." But if you're if you're not going to mm-hmm. play well because of that, we saw that with his hip, we saw that with his ankle, that he yep. can't be who he needs to be unless he's like a hundred percent. Some people can play injured and play very well, and and it's harder for some other people to do. And I think for him, the number one thing is just to be as healthy as you can and be able to be that kind of sixth or seventh man that's coming off the bench. And if you, if you run that second unit, that's a bigger step than we've seen from him in the past three years. Yeah, I like that. I like that take because one of the things that I noticed of Killian Hayes early in the summer, and I'm, I I probably might have missed, like obviously, unless they tell us why he bulked up a little bit, because he, he bulked up a little bit. Yeah. We will never know. But I thought one of the reasons was to try and have better durability. So he can mm-hmm. last a little bit longer. We know that when he first came into the league, he wasn't necessarily that cut, that ripped, that physical of a player. He was 6'5", and he had some measurables. But it wasn't like Killian Hayes was, you know, a bulked up figure like we see with uh, K. Cunningham putting on some weight as well. And I, and now I'm sitting here thinking about it. I'm wondering if that is something they're doing. I know my father, he, was, he played ball when he tore his ACL. Um, the one thing they told him in rehab is you're going to want the muscles around this area to be a little bit you know, bigger. And in your other knee as well, because you're going to be putting a lot of stress on it during rehab. Make sure that those mm-hmm. muscle groups are, you know, safe and sound. I don't mean to take this to a whole medical thing. But no, yeah, it's true. It just, it just, I don't know. I feel like maybe Killian is working towards those things. Uh, the skill set is not the question. It's exactly what Rod just brought up. Does anybody here or even in the commenters question Killian Hayes' skill set? We, we wonder, hey, can he improve on that three-point shot? But we does anybody think he can't dribble? Does anybody think nope. he can't pass? No, he's got, he's got playmate? The things that we're looking for from him, especially when we see him get mad or confident killing or certain matchups that we know he probably has circled. If this is the thing, it's the durability. Like, is, it, is that affecting his confidence? Is he afraid to drive into the rack because the physicality is different than that of what he would experience in France? I looked at, you know, mm-hmm. I went back to look at his highlights from France. Um, while kind of doing this prep, and you see it, it's a different game, man. You got the confidence of just dribbling into the paint and doing a layup and knowing I'm not getting that type of uh, American-style foul. Like, we foul here to stop you from making that. I didn't really see that in in his clips. It was just kind of this almost like ballet style of basketball, man. I'm just you know, yeah. parrowing right inside and loop-de-loop and spin and whoop and – 
<laughs> and here's a layup. And then that's what I saw. Like, like this kind of, even his handles weren't t- as tight as they've had to be here. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I recognize where I, I think he is pulling some things together from that end. So I, I do appreciate you uh, bringing up that point. Um, I, I think that is the most important aspect is his health. Yeah, the other thing for me is efficiency numbers. He's never shot 40% from the field. And he hasn't shot 30 at least from three. So those are two things that I'm looking for this year. And maybe that ties into also being healthy, um, being able to stay on the floor. And I think being in the second unit added talent too. Like I, I really, I don't know what the starting lineup is going to be, but depending on, you know, if Bagley starts or if he doesn't, he's going to have more talent working with him in that second unit. I think that's going to benefit him greatly too because he's a great passer. But great passers, you need guys that can finish. You need guys that can hit shots to, to really, you know, show a lot of what Killian, because his skill set, you mentioned it too. Like, he's got everything. To me, it was always efficiency, and it was staying healthy. And Rod hit on that staying healthy. But for me, it's being more efficient. Because you can take, you know, seven to ten shots per game, but the problem is you're, you're, you are you got to get more efficient. Because guys that take 20 shots, it's easy to be efficient. Because then you got really got to get, if you're taking 18 shots, you got to make nine. You know, but if yeah. you take seven and you only hit two then it's like, all right, you're shooting 30% from the field. Like, it, it's just about being more efficient for Killian. And he's going to get great, a, a plenty of, of great looks this year, considering yeah. you're adding Jaden Ivey. Obviously, you're already playing with Kate Cunningham. So if they're all on the court together, he's going to get those opportunities. It's just about can he knock it down. I think he can. Yep, so. Yeah, and, and I, I'm hoping that people understand our critical commentary is coming from the fact that we all believe that even off the bench, he's still going to play 25 minutes oh, yeah. a game. He'll be your first or second guy. Yeah, he's still going to be a player that you can consider at the end of games this year. Do we know if Jay and Ivy can handle the end-of-game pressure? Do we know what his defense is? We know that Killian right now – is one of our best perimeter defenders. That's what we do know. Right. We know that he is the guy that can go out there, and if we need to say, hey, Killian, go out there and hound him from one end of the court to the other end of the court. I feel confident about that with Killian Hayes. So the, the critical commentary realistically centers around the expectation that we have for him. Even though we might not see him as a long-term viable starter, we still believe that he's supposed to play a critical role on this team and be a leader not just off the bench. He can leave the bench, but Killian was Troy's first draft pick, Mm -hmm. and he was a point guard. Those guys, by extension, are supposed to be the coach on the floor. They're supposed to be the vision of the organization. That's the only reason why we put Zeke and Chauncey up on these pantheons. Obviously, the championships help, but these guards were things that represented and embodied so much more. And as Killian steps into that more and more, I believe that he gets comf- more and more comfortable, more and more confident. Now, the talent around him has increased. That, to me, is the biggest thing. I know everything King, shout out to him, Marcus, on our table talk. That was one of the things that he pointed out, was the increase of talent around Killian and just on this team overall that I believe it carries a different swag. You know, when your group is uh, is about it, you're about it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? To, to some, some degrees, uh-huh. you know. But Rod, I wanted to get you back in on this uh, on this Killian Hayes talk. No, I, I agree with those points. And I think the um, Jeff's point about the efficiency is it depends on it's the same conversation. What are you asking him to do? Because I, I, I will I will die on this hill about Killian. He is not going to be a 15 point a game score. Right. He's going to be 10 or 11 points and, and six assists is a, is a good game. And, and maybe one or two turnovers that mm-hmm. those are optimal numbers from him. But the more talent he has around him is going to reduce the number of shots that he has that maybe he's only taken five shots a game, maybe, mm-hmm. and maybe one or two of those are threes. So right. his ability to even get to that 10 points is going to be based on his ability to get to the free throw line. So, that's and then that circles back man. into health, health and durability, and and can he be effective in the few things that you're asking him to do? You want him to be a setup guy. You want him to get to lob to Hamadou. You want him to lob to um, Jalen Duran if, if that ends up being the second second group center, or or finding Kelly Olynyk on the perimeter. You just want him to be a basic floor general, and if the the quarterback term is a game manager, do those things and make sure everybody else is eaten. If you do that then you've succeeded in your job. And so I I think the efficiency is not necessarily in points and scoring, but the efficiency is in how many assists can he rack up with more talent around him and how can he reduce those turnovers? And he's going to be at the ends of games 
where he might end up playing with Cade and, and Ivy and uh, Sadiq or with Livers and whatever. And, and while we're on that, it just kind of depends on what that second group is. Are you starting Livers or does, does, does Killian get that three-point shooter defensive guy who can erase a lot of those mistakes that he makes? It just really depends on what that second group is. And I think that's a, that's the key to all of this is who's he running with? Is he running with Livers? Is he running with um, Jalen Duran? And he has that lob threat that's right there. That's going to make him that much more effective. And I was going to say, too, one thing you can say, for, uh, I, at least for now, I can make this prediction. He has Duran. Like, that's yeah. a big deal, man. <laughs> I, at that second unit, and Rod kind of hinted, hinted at it at the end. Like, to have a guy like Jalen Duran, now you can you can have a situation where if you have livers off the bench, not only do you have the three-point shooting, and you have another guy that can on the wing that can guard multiple positions, but you have Duran. Like, that lob threat for Killian, too. I mean, we saw what Bagley was able to do for the entire team. But if you have Duran mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. running pick and rolls with Killian, that's that's yeah. a point guard's best that's friend. Saucy, that's right? a like, point guard's best friend. I feel like Killian's going to benefit from that greatly as, as well. Yeah, I, I it, overall just the the infusion of high intelligence athleticism that they that Troy has added to this team right. is going to be so huge because Killian is an intelligent player. When he gets out on a break, you instantly see his eyes up ahead, looking to hit whoever is up there. You know, he'll throw that full court pass, and if you're there, he's getting it there on the money. So much so that Dwayne Casey said, I break my protocol to allow Killian to throw one-handed passes. Like, Dwayne has been on record on press conferences saying, I don't allow that. But Killian continues to show me that he can do that at an elite level. And he can find players at angles. He can He's hitting players that I don't know how he's seeing them. I'm thinking he's missing the player over here in the corner, but he finds up getting them on some funny angle. And these are the things that I know Troy and Dwayne Casey have to be sitting back when they're looking at the film study like, oh, my God, if he can just pull it all together, if mm-hmm. he can just pull it all together. And to Rod's point, maybe reducing his role and asking him to, to just focus more on the things that he is specialized in, like his playmaking, like mm-hmm. his passing, and focus on just inching your efficiency up so you're not enough w- with shooting so that you're not a liability. That might be the best version of Killian that this team needs. And I think, too, and I, I want to bring this to you guys, this question, I mean, I'm not saying, and I don't want to make this comparison. I got to watch how I speak here. But <laughs> there's, I there a lot of people have issue if you see Ben Simmons at the end of games, a guy who can't shoot. So with Killian Hayes, I'm not saying he's Ben Simmons. He can shoot. That's not what I'm saying. But with, if you just hit on it too, Brandon, you you said he needs to not be a liability. That's what I'm looking for because if he is a liability and the efficiency numbers aren't great, I don't see, I don't see how you can make an argument to have him at the end of a game. If you have Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, I would rather have Sadiq and Livers for the spacing and, and for the defensive versatility. Like, you can have Killian, of course. He, he brings a lot of things. But if you can't, if I can't rely on you to knock down shots, how can I make an argument that you're in a, a close game with two minutes left? I can't argue with that when you have ball handler and a playmaker on the court and Cade as well. Yeah. I don't you, see you it. Well, and, 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 and. But we saw teams trap Cade a lot more and and get the ball out of his hands or try to get the ball out of his hands at the ends of games. And I like where you're going, Jeff, with saying um, you you can go livers and bay and you don't need to worry about a three guard. But if you're you're kind of playing to what the other team has, and if they've got a three guard group out there, then you've you've got some weaknesses there that you you want to try to – because Cade isn't the fleetest of foot. Maybe Mm -hmm. you need a guy who is a little bit bigger and bulkier and can guard that other team's point guard. That's so it's point. going to be matchup based in a lot of cases too. But yeah, you he has to be effective and efficient out there and at least a threat. If you can spread the floor and he's got a one-on-one and he's going downhill, he's got to be able to, to your efficiency point, yeah. he's got to be able to convert on that. He's yeah, got to at right. least be able to get to the free throw line and draw that foul. Yep. Yep. So instead of necessarily being a 40% three-point shooter, he just can't be the guy who, at the end of games, mm-hmm. when Cade is driving and getting double-teamed and Killian's sitting wide open at the at the top of the key. Like Draymond Green. Because that's what the defense is going to do. You yep. think the defense is going to leave Bagley open? No. They're not going to leave Sadiq Bay open. They're not. If they're trapping Cade, where's that trap coming from? At a, in, an, in a game lineup, it's going to come off of one of those guards. Exactly. So he has to be able to – it was good, Stick. We He has to be able to hit – that shot. I, I get that. Yeah. I don't care if you missed all your shots all game long. You got to be able to hit that mm-hmm. shot or turn that into hit something. One. Hit that one. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. I, I, I believe I believe that overall Killian is going to prove to us that he can handle that backup guard role. 
Mm-hmm. I, I, what he's going to be asked to do, it fits his wheelhouse. Uh, we just got to make sure that, or he has to make sure that, like you said to your point, he has the efficiency that fits with the team. So maybe his overall numbers don't look right. But when Ricky Rubio was really, really, really making a difference in the NBA, you know, for the teams that he was playing on, uh, that's it, it wasn't even like he was the best efficient you know, basketball player out there. But when he stuck to his guns as it related to playmaking, if people knew he he might not even shoot this three, but if we do not get out there, some way somehow Ricky Rubio is gonna do something and find the center for a dunk, sign this find this guy for a three. And Ricky Rubio had confidence though. Mm-hmm. It's like he knew like I can come out here and I can take over the game strictly from playmaking. And I want Killian to have that type of confidence and maybe reducing his role a little bit rather than putting him in positions of, hey, you're gonna start, but as soon as you pass half court, give the ball to Blake. Hey, you're going to start, <laughs> but as soon as you pass half court, throw the ball to K. I don't know how much that works for his development, but if he's in a defined role, yeah, put him there. And and the one thing that's very comforting, and and Jeff, you 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 actually brought up this point. It's not like Troy's going to wait. He's going to give players their chances, but there's more drafts. There's more free agencies. There's going to be more guards. Competition. At the helm. We see it. I love the fact mm-hmm. that there's competition. I'm sure Cade, Ivy, and Killian are cool now. And then it's going to be training camp. They'll still be cool, you know. They'll still be cool. They'll be but going at each other. These guys, they should be looking at each other with healthy competition. Mm-hmm. They should in their eyes. They should. If not, then what are they doing? Don't don't just be passive. Why are we here? Why we are we, we here? don't want that. But to, to continue on with some of Troy's draft picks from his first year, you know, when I was doing the, the, the prep, I was like, you know what? Hey, that's the focus. <laughs> with Sadiq Bay. I wanted to ask you all, and I know we've talked about some of this before, but realistically, what is Sadiq Bay's ceiling? I don't want to talk about hypotheticals um, as it relates to where we hope he gets, but do mm-hmm. we believe that Sadiq Bay can legitimately, is he legitimately on pace to be a number two, a number three, or a number four option? You know, like, I'm yeah. not sitting here saying, yeah. oh, Sadiq Bay is going to be a, a mega star or anything of that nature, but... I'm sure as Troy Weaver is sitting down and, 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 and looking at the team and looking at the scope, these are some questions that are, are crossing across, you know, coming across his mind. And for me, as I just continue to sit down and look at this team, I feel like Sadiq Bey is somebody that we all love and we all appreciate. But I feel like sometimes he's the one that might not get a pass necessarily, but we're not necessarily making a decision on him because he is so good. But what is he? And he's so young, too. And he's so young. I think... Two people get so wrapped up in in number two or number three, like the the fact of the matter is, if you look at Golden State this year, they won the NBA championship. Mm. Who's their number three? Who's their number four? Their number three, you could argue, is Jordan Poole. Their number yeah. four is Clay Thompson. Like I, 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 to say, Sadiq might not be your number two or three if you're on a championship team, isn't a disrespectful thing at all. That's actually mm-hmm. a compliment. If you're the fourth best player, if you want to go to Boston, you could probably say their fourth is Marcus Smart. I mean, who? I mean, name someone else. But Grant Williams, whoever it is, those players are still valuable. So to answer the question, what's his ceiling, I'm going to just put it in perspective in terms of when you're, when you're a championship team. I think he can be your third option, of course. I think Jaden Ivey has that second option. I think he's just so good, so dynamic. There's so much potential there. He'll take that two option. Yeah. Maybe even number one if Kate slides to number two, just how his game is. Who knows? But for Sadiq, I think when you're, when you, you're right there to win a championship, Sadiq's your third or fourth. And that's not a bad thing. He could still be your fourth option scoring 16 points per game. It's not – I just don't – it, it's too he's too young to really put a a ceiling or a cap I, on it. He could be a twenty point yeah. scorer, but from what I've seen, the inconsistency. I think he'll get better, but I could see him being a third or fourth if you're a, you know in the NBA Finals. It feels like you're hinting at the shift that we're seeing in the NBA, the mm-hmm. dawn of the big threes, the dawn of the super teams. You need like four or five guys now. Yeah, those yeah. eras seem to be regressing, and it seems to be going back to what we saw more or less in the going to work era. Right. Where we knew going yep. into the Pacers and going into the Indiana series that it was a team full of hoopers. It wasn't like, okay, big three just shut down. That's why when we got to the finals, I think a lot of Piston fans were like, whew. I, I wasn't looking at that Lakers team like, oh, my gosh, a team full of legends. I was looking at them like, okay, two current legends and a bunch of guys that I'll tip my cap to. You know what I mean? I wasn't looking at Gary Payton and Carl Malone like, oh, my goodness, they're going to just come in here and absolutely be better than our guys. I'm like, what, who's Gary Payton going to shut down? Right, Rip. 
Johnson, <laughs> get out of here. He was too old at that point in time. No disrespect to the glove. But I was more concerned about those series leading up to the Lakers because of how stacked those teams were. And it wasn't necessarily stacked full of uh, superstar players. It was stacked full of players like Sadiq Bays, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Those those mm-hmm. players that, whether they're scoring you know 25 a game or 16 a game, they're impacting the game in yeah. powerful ways, and they're dependable. It's what we say we want out of Killian. Can you be efficiency in your dependable moments and what you're asked to do? Right. And so I do like that vibe that you're going because the champion, as well as the other team that was in the championship, neither one of those I would consider super teams or big threes or built up the ways that we saw some of our previous champions win, including Golden State in its first foray. Even though they were built through the draft, they were heavily dependent on their big three plus one. Right. Heavily. This championship plus Boston plus some of these other teams that we're looking at, they're more... um, they're, they're teams that seem to have a lot more skill and talent spread out across yeah, it. More depth. I mean, you, especially now, like you go back then, it was the the Kyrie, Kevin Love, and LeBron. But nowadays, like you need to be six, seven deep to 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 win a title. Mm-hmm. That's just how it is. Yeah. Rob, what's your what's your perspective on it, man? With Sadiq Bay, because I as I looked at it, I'm like, you know what? We've seen the best of Sadiq Bay be where on the the traditional sense over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, he can be a number two. But to just Jeff's point, and I'm glad he kind of has raised this perspective, you know, what what is Sadiq uh, to you? What is he going to be? I think he can be a, a two or three um, best player um, because he's he's just going to be so solid that he's going to do whatever you need him to do. And he's he, he may not be that number one scorer that you um, tried out there and is at the top of the scouting report. I think Cade is going to end up being that, but you're going to surround him with some other players. At some point, they're going to go and get a a bigger sort of veteran. I don't think they stand pat with this roster as is mm, okay. uh, for the next two sense. years, three That's years. Right. When they so they go get some superstar type player to uh, kind of fast forward this rebuild. So I think that's where it ends up being. But Sadiq is going to be the chameleon that can fit in. Oh, you need me to score? Okay, I can do that. You need me to hit twenty tonight? I can do that. I can, he's just going to be whatever you need him to be. I like that. I like that. And I, I think I've, uh, you know, likened you know, him before in his role and his position sometimes to, you know, some of these guys to that of the of the Draymond Green role or him being like of that Clay Thompson role, just depending on, like you said, he can kind of fit in anywhere. They, we heard them talk mm-hmm. about, hey, you know, we want to see if he can play the three or the four. And then you hear them also talk about, we want to see how much two he can play with his ball handling and things of that nature, running the pick and roll. Right. These are things that Dwayne Casey talked about earlier in the, or about midway through the season. Midway through the season when Sadiq Bay started showing a little bit more to his game is when uh, Dwayne Casey started putting that out there that, yeah, we're going to start seeing him in the pick and roll potentially next year. We're going to have him work on his handles a little bit more. That Sadiq Bay is the, and those comments are the things that got me thinking what can he really be? And I'm glad that Rod touched on what he did as it relates to, you know, the Pistons may still be seeking to bring in that absolute superstar, which helps us kind of better understand a little bit more of what the Pistons may be hoping for Sadiq Bay long term. Not that I've seen Troy Weaver or Dwayne Casey put a cap on any of these players, but obviously they have a job to do to continue to bring in talent and build the best roster that they can. Right, and I think, too, with Sadiq Bay, one, two things I cannot take away from him is his work ethic which cannot be underestimated. You don't know. Uh, listen, Sadiq, how hard he works, he could work his way up to a number Wants three. Wants to be great. A solid three, and that's big time, man. And then the, the second thing is, he's Iron Man. He, he can stay healthy. And that's what I look for, yep. too, a guy who can play mm. the entirety of the 82-game season. Like, that's who you need to rely on. They're, they're, you know, Jay Nivey could miss 20 games. Who steps up? Sadiq Bay. Yeah. Like, that's what I look that for. Durability. And it, the, the, the durability. So his value is, is is so important. That's why I don't want people to get mixed up. You hear, you know, third or fourth option. Like, I don't even want to put a cap on it, but it's more of a projection thing. Like, you, you who knows, man? Yeah. He works yeah. his butt off, though. Because maybe that whole big three stuff is actually what killed uh, OKC. That whole big three yeah. and one. Like, maybe them getting in their heads and in, in, in thinking what they should or shouldn't have or what's entitled to them. It, it seems like the specific people that Troy has targeted just they, – they've completely bought into what the restoration truly means. I don't see there being this aspect of, hey, I'm I'm the number one, I'm the number two, not even Cade. Because I think we're all comfortable with the fact that uh, – believing that there could be huge strings of games where Cade's scoring like 15 to 17 points per game. 
but he's getting like eight assists. Yeah, triple double. You know, numbers. triple double numbers, things like that, averaging yeah. close to fifteen, nine and nine over a stretch. You know what I mean? I don't he's not going out there to gun. This team is being put together more in the line of where I I believe we saw um go to state warriors this year. You have your main connector, which was their Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying K can have Steph Curry people. I'm just talking about the how you build your teams. You build them in the models of the heart and soul. Of the, of the teams that are winning. And our heart and our soul, our connector, our guy, it is K Cunningham. And how this team goes is going to be based on how K Cunningham goes. Then beyond that, you see that there is a bevy of talent, not a bevy of just, oh, good role players, oh, specialists. He can just shoot a three. That's why I'm glad they pushed Sadiq Bay, and I'm glad that Sadiq Bay pushed himself. The articles that Rod has done, the articles that, that James has done, you see that Sadiq individually wants to be great. And he pushed himself I beyond, I'm a spot up three point shooter. He came in as like, I'm, I'm, we keep saying it, man. What's our word? He's a hooper. That's what he did. He came in and said, I can do a little bit of everything. And then towards the second half of the season, it was like, I can do a lot of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so for this team to be successful, I guess we do need people to be able to slot in anywhere. Does Sadiq Bey have off nights? Like, there might be nights where he's not hitting the three, but does he have like an off night? Right. Like an absolute, Shooting, like, maybe, but he's still going to be playing hard. Like, he'll, he'll still be out there. And I think, too, to go back to the point we always talk about is what are you asked to do? I mean, if you look at teams like the Phoenix Suns with Michael Bridges, a guy who is asked to be their best defender and knock down three-point shots, Sadiq, we're not a winner. Like, he has the flexibility to grow into his own player. It's not like he came to the Pistons and we were like, all right, this is your role. You're going to stay in this role, you know, while we're winning. Mm-hmm. There, there's, there's a little more freedom in Detroit. I think that's the most... That, that's a benefit for all these young guys too because when you get drafted to a team that you know starts winning and you you grow into a role you just stay in that role and, and you get into this box and I feel like with Sadiq Bay there's no box right. like he's not a three and D man he's got so much more there right why is Jeff trying to anger the uh, the the Dwayne Casey detractors and that he can't develop young players why are you trying to do that man oh man I hate that <laughs> yeah it's, it's- and this, this is the last thing I got. Jeff, Jeff is completely right, is that um, you need guys who are going to be, and we're seeing that also with Isaiah Stewart, that is he a, sin, a center? And well, maybe he's not big enough, but let me find something else he can do. He can develop that three-point shot. He was always a, a good perimeter shooter. Oh, okay, well, let's make him a four now with mm-hmm. that same aggressiveness. And if you dare put him with Jalen Duran, this is going to just be just nasty stuff that we're going to see every night. So. I, I think the development and figuring out what the roadmap to this thing looks like, because they didn't have to go out and get Jalen Duran. They could have very much said, hey, we're happy with Bagley and um, and, and, and Stewart and, and Olenek, and we'll figure it out. They said, they consciously said, we're going to go out and get Jalen Duran to kind of give us another level of this toughness and whatever else. So, you know, I, you, you as we, we've done so much, you kind of pat Troy on the back for having the foresight to do it and the aggressiveness to go out and do it. But then also looking at what this team can be um, with some more growth and some more time. Yeah, it's just going to be real nasty. Yeah. yeah, and we definitely pat him on the back because we sat here for weeks saying, would anybody be surprised if Troy wound up with two first-round picks in this draft? And we all sat here like, no. <laughs> yeah. That means it's, it's Wednesday or Thursday. It's a normal day. It's a normal draft. <laughs> it's day. a normal day. Real quick, Rod. Just real quick, what's your floor and ceiling for this Pistons team? Because Jeff and I are going to get into what J.J. Redick had to say about them being a championship contender in a couple years. Floor, floor is another lottery pick, but not like the third worst record, maybe like the um, maybe sixth or seventh worst record. Um, and ceiling is, I think, the play-in. I think they can, or I'm not even play-in. I would say, well, yeah, because it's the seventh or eighth. No, I'd say the sixth seed. I'd say the ceiling is the sixth seed. Mm, I yes. like that. I see. Boy, we got to discuss that as he as he leaves on that. Let's get that. Let's get that drum roll going. Thank you, as always, to the Thank legend you, Rod. Detroit You're the legend. News, Rod Beard. Let's go. The man, the myth, the legend. Appreciate it. Hey, bro, till next time. Thank you, as always. Rod's the man. He is. Absolutely. And that's man. interesting. A six seed. I. That kind of made me. You give, what kind of Kool Aid are you giving him, I, bro? <laughs> that, that's that's Rod. I'm trying to figure out what he's drinking. I was ready to say, <laughs> "Hey, AFC play in," you know, because play in means what seventh. Yeah, eighth, yeah. Ninth. Even if you get the seventh, you're still in the. But plan. he said, "You know what? Ceiling is sixth seed," and I think that's important because we all sat here and believed that Cade Cunningham could be an All Star candidate this year. That's that's what a lot of people are believing that he could have Alonzo 
uh, not uh, LaMelo Ball type of a second year where he could sneak into that all-star game, whether mm-hmm. as an injury replacement or whatever. But for that to happen, the team has to be playing well. And at the time, the Hornets were in playoff, what, yeah. six seed? Yeah. I and believe. If they're a six seed, he'll make the all-star game. Yeah. If he has good numbers. And, and, and so we have to talk about that. We can't just let these types of things be out there and not rectify them. Like, if we believe Kay Cunningham is that deal, we believe in these additions of Jalen Duran and uh, Jaden Ivey. We believe in the growth and the maturation of Sadiq Bay. We believe that Killian may take a step. Marvin Bagley, we saw what he what he brought being winded. He wasn't really playing. It wasn't much practice, though. His pops was straight up about this stuff, man. He was right. not in a good place. Came here just off the bench, man, off the scrap heap, and we saw what he could do. Now we got a whole season, off season when he's happy. You see his interviews down at Summer League. Marvin Bagley is happy. Yeah, he is. I'm excited for what we're going to see out of this team and we're going to get this year because it is an accruing of talent. It is guys who want to play together. It is guys who built a little bit of chemistry at the end of last season. I don't believe that losing Jeremy Grant will affect the chemistry on offense, though there is something to be seen about what we lost on his versatility, uh, defensive versatility. But we gain a paint present in Durant. Right. We do. We you, gain. You a lose a guy more. you can give the ball to and just be like, go get a bucket. You know, when there's yeah. those two-minute stretches where you don't score, three-minute stretches. But, yeah, I think they'll fill the void. And I want to answer the question, the ceiling and the floor, because – we had we had you on from half court the pod. Yes, we talked yes, about yes. it, and I just it, it was uh, kind of caught me off guard the question initially because the more I think about it, I think the floor for me has to be thirty five wins or thirty wins. It's got to be in the thirty win ballpark because they they won low twenties last year. If you can improve by at least ten wins, I'm cool with that. I could take that. Yeah. For the ceiling, I would have to say, I mean, Rod said the six seed. I like that. I kind of like the enthusiasm. I, I, I'm like going to stick with. I'm going to stick with the, being in the plan because that's kind of generalized. You can be in there with the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. It doesn't matter. But being in the plan term would be my ceiling. I, I, I don't see them making the six seed just because. That means you'd have to, man, the six seed, I think last year, correct me if I'm wrong, I know if you I just pulled had up standings, the records, it's yeah, like 45 sorry. wins or something like that. What is it? Six seed, 46 wins, and that was the that's, Chicago Bulls. See, that's that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. But, again, he, he was talking about ceilings, so the best they can absolutely do. Um, but, yeah, that'd be my ceiling. Ceiling would be probably the playing tournament somewhere in that ballpark, and then the, the floor would have to be 30-plus wins. Got to gotta clear 30, man. And the playing tournament is 7th seed through the 10th seed, just so people know as I'm looking at it here. That was Brooklyn, Atlanta, Cleveland, and Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And just to put it in perspective, man, you're right. It's, it's going to be tough. The 10th seed, what was their record? Do you know how many wins they had? Oh, I, I, what do you yeah. guys think? The only reason why is because I oh, lost. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. yeah. You guys, you let us know. What do you think their record was, man? What's the 10th seed record in the East? That was Charlotte. Different. And we'll wait. Do, 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 do. Mr. Jeffrey I afraid you want to tell him? Man, at least 40 wins. You got to yes. clear you got to clear 40. 43 wins, bro. 43 in, and 39 as the 10th seed. In the West, the Spurs made it what as a 10th seed. They had 35 wins. What was it? 30? What is going on with the East? What happened? The East is the new West. <laughs> I mean, it's tough, man. They it's like they gave LeBron Shoot. all that flack for years for going through the East, and now he's in the West. He's got, I mean, the East got yeah. better. So. so, so I get you. That thirty win should be. We see here the thirty win teams were Washington and New York last year at thirty five wins and thirty seven wins. Yeah, and for them, it's like okay. I mean, for Washington, they're like, all right, we'll take it. But for the Pistons, I'll take thirty five wins, thirty six wins, twenty three to thirty five. That'd be plus twelve. I, I know on the half, from half court, I believe I said thirty five wins yeah. should be their their floor. Yeah. Uh, and that was before I actually kind of looked in at this. And, yeah, I'm, I, if they can't be in that tier of what Washington and New York was last year, mm-hmm. then we should start to say, hey, let's take a closer look at this talent and see what we need to do. Because we don't question us at okay? Obviously, the second year is going to answer a lot as defenses shift to him, figure him out, and try to take the ball out of his hands. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, my floor is 35 wins. My ceiling, though, as I'm looking at it. Oh, man, dog, that sixth seed. It's, you know, it's only three wins. <laughs> Three wins separating the sixth seed from the tenth seed. Uh, it, don't drink the Kool. Is it in here? I think it's in. Oh, here, bro. Uh, hey, come on, bro. Co- hey, come comment on, man. down below. Come is, on, is man. The, is the sixth seed? Come on, man. A, is, is the sixth seed too much, bro? I, is it? I, I think. Oh is man. Six, or is that just right? The, the, should let's for the ceiling. Way. We're not talking about will they? I mean, you're just talking about the best should case the ceiling, scenario. Yeah, the best case. Six seed, man. I mean, Ooh, man, that's we'd, we'd be down a little season arena going crazy. Can you imagine 46? I mean, that's 
No, nah, man, that is a lot of that's wins. A lot of wins, bro. man. That's like that's a plus. A that's like doubling wins. your wins. I mean, that's going from what would they win twenty three games last year? Yeah, that's a whole. You're doubling lot of your wins. wins. Because if they got <laughs> to the forty three, if they got to the playing tournament, and it took the same wins, they would have to have plus twenty. Do, did they? I, and, well, you, I mean, and you lost Jeremy, but you get a healthier team. Yeah, so, right. so they add Jaden Ivy, they add Jalen Duran. Um, Guys are getting Marvin better. Bagley, uh, Sadiq Bay is going to be better. We we are going to say Kay Cunningham will play at an All Star level, at least at a Lamelo Ball level from last year. Absolutely, even if he doesn't make the team. Um, Hopefully, Killian's beef a little Stu, more efficient. Killian, Killian got, yeah, Beef Stew got the three point three shot. Three point Stew, as I'm calling him. Um, That's why this team is so hard to predict, bro. Ooh. I mean, because JJ Reddick, do we? Let me get his comments up here, man. But JJ's right. What like, I say? like what he's thinking. He said, "I'm excited to see them play over the next two or three years. They will be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference." I'm looking at some of these teams, and unless they draft very, very, very well, Miami could have some issues. Philly could have some issues. Mm-hmm. Toronto could have some issues. Chicago could. These teams, if they don't draft well or if they don't sign the right players, which I don't know what prospects they have. Obviously, Miami is always viable to sign a free agent. But what does Chicago and Philly and these teams right now have that the Pistons can't present to prospective free agents? We hear, or superstars, we've heard them from DeMar DeRozan to Kevin Durant, all praise Kay Cunningham and the direction this team is going. We also hear these guys praise Dwayne Casey too. That's another key thing. So, you know, and if they like what Troy Weaver is doing, I could see this team being what J.J. Redick is saying in a couple of years because isn't that supposed to be the timeline? Absolutely. And I think also there's there's an underrated thing that with Troy Weaver too, like his player relationships. Mm-hmm. I, I think guys, mm-hmm. like if the Bulls call and the Pistons call, and you, a lot of guys know Troy Weaver just in general. I mean, he worked in scouting for a while. Mm-hmm. He worked under Jim Boheim with, with in Syracuse, so he's familiar with a lot of different player relationships. All the way back to Carmelo. Uh, yeah, all the way back to Carmelo. So he's he's familiar with a lot of guys in the league. I mean, that that's just a fact. So I think when guys call him, it, it, he's not reached that Iserman pinnacle yet as because Iserman's a Hall of Fame player. So when he calls hockey players, you know, guys are like, what's mm-hmm. up? But with Troy Weaver, though, it's kind of similar. I, I feel like, you know – it's going to benefit the Pistons in the long run. I, I get through trades, it can happen as well. But in free agency, when, when Troy's making the phone call, it's better than, I'll, I'll tell you this, it's better than Stan Van Gundy making the phone call. It is. Times 10. It really is. Like it really Joe is. Dumars making the phone call. Like, you're going to listen to Joe Dumars. Like it's fr- it's freaking Joe Dumars. Yep, even at his uh, down years, you still yeah. going to pick up the phone. It's like, it is Joe Dumars. Yeah. Or what he meant to the game as a player. Um, as a as a front office personnel, as a spectator, even there were years when he would just show up to the games and support the teams. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna answer that phone call, right? And Troy's not a Hall of Fame player; he never played. But still, there's that that there's that, an intrinsic addition to the game, value to the game right. that he's brought in aura yeah. he's got. Like it's Troy Weaver. Yeah, like, and, and this is a time for him to be in the business, the position that he's at. I think this was the right time. I know the Pistons were looking at bringing in Troy Weaver. Uh, before they actually did, there were there were reports that had come out a couple years prior before they actually got Stan Van Gundy and they wound up saying, OK, you know, what, we're going to go with SVG. It wasn't like widely reported, but there were reports and there were rumors and such that that's who they wanted out of the OKC regime. So glad that they made the decision. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, at the point at that time, they were like, no, imagine if he would have came in here with that manglement of a cap sheet. And I heard at the time Troy Weaver didn't want it because of that. So that's why I heard the Pistons at that time when they just unloaded Drummond. People were like, what? You just got a bag of chips for him for that? <laughs> no, bro. They were trying to set the table for who? Troy Weaver. When you got the new girl coming in, bro. Got to clean up. Clean everything out, clean bro. How do you want it? You want it like that? I got everything. <laughs> What's your favorites? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Bada bing, bada boom. It's yours. Please come over tonight. <laughs> that's, <laughs> how, that's how it was with Troy. That's that's what it was. I mean, because yeah. I heard he did not want Detroit necessarily. And I, I'm sure it had things to do over the years. Think about it. He recruited Carmelo to Syracuse, bro, won a championship with them as assistant coach. Like, And then all reports were he's going to Pistons at number two. That's huge. As it relates to legacy and all that type of stuff and championships, Carmelo's still going out there saying, I could have won a championship. And we just talked about the personal connection that Troy has to these guys. We don't know what this man's thought over the years. I do know that he initially didn't, he wasn't fond, but he broke down to the idea because it's a whole new regime. Tom Gores, you notice, we didn't see much of, we don't hear much of him. No. He only comes out and does charitable initiatives now. 
We don't hear about. But I respect that. Yep. That he's letting Troy work. Exactly. Like, get to work, man. I trust you. Handle that. My, I'm they set the t- look, bro. Look, they got the mom in law out of there. He was like, look, the pistol's like, hey, Troy, Tom Gross is going to be gone. Mom in law's not in this. We set the table for you. The house is yours, baby. Come on in and just do what you got to do. Work out. And that's what he's done. That's the reason we sit here and talk about this floor and the ceiling. It's going to be tough. But I believe in this. I believe in the players that he's bringing in. This is no longer us having to hope on players that were our second or third options. This isn't like we missed out on our Devin Bookers. Right. This is Troy coming in and legitimately outside of the Killian and Tyrese Halliburton picks and which way you lean on that. All the other picks have been the players that were like, yo, yeah. Look how much we we are endeared to Beef Stew, to Sadiq Bay, to Kay Cunningham, to even Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran. They haven't even played a game, but we see these guys are coming to take somebody's spot. They're yep. coming to, to 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 put themselves on the map. Yo, with that, I wanna I'm gonna save this for Rod. I wanted to talk Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran. I wanted to talk their best fit, and if we believe, and we're gonna talk about this next week, if we believe that. Their arc right now is better than Beef Stew and Killian Hayes overall. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No we're question. Gonna, we're going to get into the intricacies of it, man. I want to be. A, I want you guys to set the table, too. Let us know what you think of it all. You know, Troy Weaver, he don't waste no time. I'm sure that there was plans for Beef Stew and Killian Hayes, and there still are, and he's not going to take anybody's opportunity off the table. But Duran and Ivy bring a whole lot of athletic, intelligent athletic competition to the guard in the uh, front court battles now right like, i love it and we're gonna get into it next week we're gonna talk about a lot of different things but before we go we talked about this on from half court we talked about the pistons all athletic lineup or the lineup that best utilizes or takes advantage of the pistons newfound athleticism and speed i'm gonna let you start here because i think i've changed up my answer from from half court and it has something to do with the second half of that question of what lineup best utilizes this team's athleticism. And it's something that Rod said earlier, too. And I'll let you start. What's your Pistons all-athletic team? And I need you guys, too, fam. What were Pistons fam? Put it down in the comments. Reply. Let us know. What five do you want to see out there that you think is, yo, this is the this is the Lob City. This is the all-speed team. Oh, <laughs> this is transition. Okay, so four and five, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Bagley and Duran. Because Bagley, I know he's athletic. He's got those hops. I know yep. he's not like a, you know, he's not running the floor, dunking on people's heads, but he can. I think he's got athletic. He's got plenty of athleticism. So I'll put Bagley at the four. And Jalen Duran doesn't need no explanation. He, he's, mm-hmm. he's, I mean, he's at the five. And then at the one, this is, I think. Let me see where you go here. Let me see if you think what I'm thinking. This one's tough. I, I'm going to, I want to say Cade because how much more athletic I think he can get. Like, he's he's really athletic. I think his game yeah. doesn't display a lot of athleticism, but he is athletic, if that makes sense. Like, he plays yeah. at his own pace. He's not running up and down the floor at 100 miles per hour, but he is athletic. So, you know what? I'm going to put him at the one. I'm going to do Jaden at the two, and then I'm going to do Diallo at the three. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with the team because I feel like that's still on paper. It's got plenty of athleticism. Although I like Livers, too. I feel like he's got some sneaky athleticism. Yeah. Sadiq Bay's got plenty of plenty of athleticism, but... Those are my five. All right, so what's that five again? You said Hamid? I'm going to do Cade, Jaden Ivey, Hamid Diallo, Bagley, and uh, Duran. That's that's an exciting team. Lobs I'm hoping, everywhere. I'm hoping we get that five. Lobs bro. to lobs to lobs. I'm hoping we get that five. Now, look, <laughs> I went a little bit different because when I was looking at the, the, the film of it all, man, I was like, you know what? Cade's athleticism is on display more when he's at the two. So I agree with you. Yeah, that's true. I agree when with you. When he's running you. PG, yeah. When he's running that 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 two is when I notice he's dunking on people and he he's he's taking different angles to the basket. The defenses are shading him differently, and that's what that's got true. me to change it from what's the Pistons All Athletic Team to which team might best utilize. And that's why at the one, don't kill me, people. Killian Hayes. I believe that as a playmaker, not that he's super athletic, his speed and as a playmaker. Mm-hmm to be able to put all of the other athletic pieces in their best position. So positions. you're utilizing. I'm utilizing. Because I got Diallo at the three. I don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah, I'm that's utilizing. A, I'm, I'm trying to ball. sit here. I'm trying to think like, okay, if we were out here and we were flying and we were gunning, <laughs> the, the, think about it. What was Chris Paul? Yeah, true. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, he true. made sure he that made those, sure he could throw work. a full court lob. And that's how I was like, you know what? K 
paid at the one is always going to be the number one option. That that look, bro, definitely. But a Killian K backcourt with, and this is where it gets tough for me because when you bring Killian at the one, and this is what I continue to to parse, you do take more athletic guys off the court. You can't play Hami and Ivy in that lineup at the same time either. Mm-hmm. You just can't. So that's where it got to pick your poison. Yeah, but I would go with the three guard rotation that we talked about of Cade, Killian, and Ivy. And then in the paint is where I'm going during and Bagley. I do got to go with that. No Diallo. I listen. I dunk contest. Do you participant? <laughs> it's only because of the way the fit goes. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the biggest question for me was what best utilizes our athleticism? Beef stew as a floor spacing three to open up more space or Bagley and Durham being able to be lob threats who could potentially hit that short mid range kind of McDicey. 16 yeah. footer. Yeah. That was the, the, the what, those are the questions for me is, is do I go with the three guard rotation or do I favor Hami and put Killian on the bench? But I just, I think about Chris Paul at that Lob City. I think about Ricky Rubio with those Timberwolves. I think about Terrell Brandon. Hey, that's a long time ago, but go look him up, man. Point guard supreme. I think about Brandon Roy. I think about some of those guards who they weren't, they weren't necessarily, well, Brandon Roy, he bodies, but yeah, some Brandon, of these guys weren't Brandon necessarily Roy. the most uber athletic, but when they were out there on the court, that team looks super athletic. And right. that's where my thinking was with Killian Hayes. I love him. It was good, Spence. And I know we got uh, Corey Woods over there in the other office. <laughs> but Shout, um, shout out K. Woods. Yeah, man. shout out K. Woods. But I don't know, man. I, I, I know it's unique. I know a lot of people probably going to be like, what? Killian can't even dunk. But it's about what he can do out there. Think about it. Um, That full court bounce pass. I forgot Lobs, who man. it was, too. But I remember he came off, got the rebound, one dribble, and just root Phew. right between nutmeg somebody and it was just beautiful like that's the type of stuff that i'm looking for uh and i want to i want k to just be in straight up man i'm trying to get it mode Damn. that's what i want to man i want to like just go you see that rebound coming off go just go that's what we saw in the all-star game yeah there were a couple times where he was able to just go and he got a couple uh in the, in the not the all-star game but the uh Rising Stars. The Rising Stars game. Yeah, but, but he's playing with more athleticism. I think that's what, a little hint of what we're going to see this year, too. Mm, like, yep. Jay Nivey, Jay Dern. Like, you're going to see K just get better and better. Yeah. Really, it's I cannot wait. It's going to be an exciting, exciting. time. It's going to be an exciting time. You know, overall, for what we're Pistons, for the Detroit Pistons, for what we're sports, for Detroit News, for everybody that we're doing things with, all of our creatives, mm. it, this has just been one of the best times uh, over the last, what, 12 or 13, 14 years for Pistons fans. Yeah. Just because of not just the hope. This isn't like Lions fans hope. This was like, all right, we have a general manager that we know has a track record. This is not like, like, I like where the Lions are today. I'm not crapping on it today. I'm talking about Lions of old where we come into the season like, yay, let's go Quinn Trisha. Like, we right. came in really believing in those guys, but there was no track record. Mm-hmm. There was nothing there. We had just gotten rid of the track record in Caldwell. With this, it's like we're taking a step up. We've steadily taken a step up. No matter what people believed of SVG, that was a step up. It's like it's like a Steve Eiserman with the wings, man. Like you know, there's they're they're going to continue to add talent. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I know Eiserman has rings. He's more accomplished, has a better resume. But I'm talking terms of like if you want to throw Troy, Eiserman, and Brad Holmes, I think they're, uh, Brad Holmes and and Weaver are getting there to that Eiserman yeah. point where it's like talent will be there. Like, every yep. year they're going to add talent. It's about, really, the, the coaching staff. Can you put it together? Yep. And, and for what confident. Yeah, if, for what the NBA needs, Troy Weaver is that perfect GM. Right. And honestly, to me, I think Troy Weaver is that perfect GM that could eventually become a president of basketball operations, similar to what uh, Joe Dumars was. I think that eventually Troy is the type of guy who, who can say, you know what, within our organization, I can bring this guy up to run GM, and I can continue to focus on the culture shout of out. this team. I hope it's Rob Murphy, by the way. Hey, shout out Rob I Murphy. I love Rob Murphy. Shout yeah. out. If y'all don't understand, if you guys don't know who Rob Murphy is, familiarize yourself with him. He is now the assistant general manager for the Detroit Pistons. He started off as the general manager within this organization as the Motor City of the Motor City Crews, and he would uh, assist, you know, with the Pistons and being on the meetings and such. And he showed a proficiency. Uh, with player evaluation, He's a smart talent, guy. everything, really smart guy. relationships. When we got to speak with him and ev- interview him at the Motor City Cruisers first game, you know, we really got to dive in deep and he made sure to take the time to connect with us as people. And that was so huge and so important, man. So, so important. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he, what, did he take some time? We're going to take some time with uh, from half court soon. I hope so. I believe he's I, I hope so. I was saying something like that, but yeah, familiarize yourself with him because that is something I can see happening. We're just, 
tossing stuff around. But yeah, with a guy like Troy, with the track record that's there, with the excitement that's there, this is the reason why we get the time to talk about these things. I don't talk about this team from a basketball standpoint and put our takes out there like this because I don't believe in it. Like, no, we have – we got a good guy. We got a, we got the real. So, hey, let us know what you guys think, Troy Weaver. Let us know what you think as well. There was a small topic in there of Dwayne Casey and how he's doing with this team. Right. What do you believe he's going to do with these young players? And is he the guy? Is Dwayne Casey the guy? I personally believe he is. You know, I don't know what you think of him long term. I, I think he is, but I still have a theory. It's like my Rob Murphy theory. I think I think Dwayne yeah. Casey will transition. I, believe I don't that think too. he he should not get fired. There no. there is no way. There should be like a organizational. Yeah, like perch. give him another role. Maybe bring someone else as head coach. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's not a firing, but it's a transition. So we're talking about what has this organization lacked for a long time? It's culture. They've Absolutely. brought in talented players. You cannot get rid of your culture, guys. So if Dwayne Casey is here and he is showing that he can make a difference within your organization, within your development, he deserves to stay. He deserves to stay. John Beeline could be here. I'm sure Dwayne Casey could yeah. be here, man. Yeah. Like yeah. Dwayne's, Dwayne's a hell of a teacher. He's, yep. a, he's a great human, too. But I do let us know what you guys are thinking because the trajectory is different. There's a lot of, there's a lot more enthusiasm. We're seeing it from the engagement. We're seeing it from the comments. We're seeing it on the – on the, on the searches and all of that, there's a lot more engagement, a lot more enthusiasm. So let us know what you think. How is he doing? But um, I think we're ready to close up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we are. Hey, Rod, how do we do, man? You like it? <laughs> yeah, I think he loves it. I think he loves it, as always. <laughs> look, man, look. We'll see you guys next time. Yes, Thank you for tuning in to the Wilbur Pistons podcast. Next week's episode is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good one. We might have a special guest in here with us, too. But stay surprise. tuned. Big surprise. Definitely. Definitely. Stay tuned. Hey, till next time. We'll still do the drum roll. We'll just drum it out of here. Hey, for the Wilbur Pistons Shout podcast. Rod. Shout out the legend, Detroit News Rod Beard. Mr. Everything over here, Sir. Jeff Iafredi, the co-host. 